We're going to cover the 12 steps for dynamic modeling, in particular how to develop the mathematical expressions that are going to go into a dynamic model. And then we'll also um, cover an example problem here, which is going to be a, just a simple tank filling application. Okay, so the very first uh, step for dynamic models is to identify an objective for the simulation. What are you trying to accomplish? What are you trying to uh, relate uh, certain inputs to certain outputs? The second one is going to be to draw a schematic diagram. The uh, third one will list all assumptions. Now this is one where in particular some uh, skip on this one and uh, they'll have to come back to it uh, when there are problems later. Okay, so it's a very important to have simplifying assumptions uh, to be able to uh, be able to manipulate the equations down to a form that can be solved that meet the objectives of the simulation. The fourth one is to determine the spatial dependence. Now this is one where you need to determine if you're going to be solving something like an ordinary differential equation or a partial differential equation. And this is particularly important for physical systems where uh, the complexity of the system uh, will determine uh, what type of model we need to be able to solve. The fifth part uh, for this is to write a dynamic balance equation. Uh, for many chemical engineering applications, this involves mass, species, energy. We could also do momentum balances as well. Uh, but there's basically the, these conserved quantities that we're going to write these balance equations around that don't change, that are fundamental. And, uh, and then you can also have other equations that you're going to add later, uh, as in step six. So you have other relationships uh, between the quantities, such as the thermodynamics, reactions, geometry, and, and others. Okay, the other thing that you want to do is uh, look at the degrees of freedom make sure you have an equation for every variable that you want to be able to solve. Uh, we're going to classify some of the variables as uh, you know, fixed inputs, not going to change, constants, other things, disturbances, they might be changing. Um, you know, you might have as well uh, manipulated variables, those are the ones that either you can change or are going to be changed by a solver or a controller. Okay, and then we want to classify outputs. Uh, these are going to be the things that are going to be predicted from the equations. And we typically want to classify these just things that we want to observe, like states. Um, these are going to be the uh, calculated quantities from the equations. Now you can also have a special class of outputs that are going to be the controlled variables. And these are going to be ones where you might have a set point or you're going to try to optimize that variable. And so we just want to kind of pay attention in particular to those equations later when we're formulating like an objective or uh, performance monitoring for our, our system. The next thing we're going to do is simplify the balance equations, uh, be able to uh, take those assumptions that we derived in uh, or, or listed in step number three. Um, so assumptions are very important from number three. And then we're going to simplify these equations uh, to a form where we get into derived quantities that we're interested in. The next one is going to be uh, to simulate steady state conditions if possible. So it's sometimes easier to solve a system of equations for when the derivatives are all equal to zero, first of all, and be able to determine what are some of those states or controlled variables based on certain inputs. Just to make, su make sure I have a uh, reasonable predictions. Okay, and then we're going to then uh, simulate the output with an input step. Uh, so we're going to change some of our inputs and make sure we have an acceptable dynamic response. So this one is for steady state, and this one is to verify the dynamic response. So let's do this for an example problem. This is going to be the uh, simulate the height of a tank by integrating the mass balance equation. So we're going to have a clue there on which balance equation we're going to start with um, for a period of 10 seconds. And the valve opens to 100% at time equals 2 and shuts at time equals 7. And then we'll use uh, this value for density, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed, so that's about water, and uh, 1 meter squared for the cross-sectional area of the tank. And for the valve, assume a valve coefficient of C equals 50. Okay, so the inlet flow is going to be equal to 50 times the percent uh, open. 
Okay, so if it's 100% open, then we're gonna have, um, you know, that's gonna be 5,000 kilograms per second. So filling up quite rapidly, very big valve, very big supply line. Uh, okay, so that goes uh, right there. Okay, so let's go back to our steps and just see if we can go through these. Um, first of all, the objective for the simulation. Now in this case, uh, we're gonna be simulating the height. So that's the objective of the simulation. We want to simulate um, the height. And so we need to derive uh, some balance equations that tell us how does height, okay, change with time. Okay, there's our objective. We want to draw a schematic diagram labeling the process variables. So here's our schematic diagram right here. Here is the height right there. And then we have a level transmitter. Um, this is a measurement device that's indicated on our diagram. It says we're measuring the level or the height. Okay, and then we also have uh, mass flow rate in and uh, we don't have any mass flow rate out. Okay, so uh, we might also have the mass in the tank as well. We have a density, which is 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed. That's just our fluid density. And then our cross-sectional area, um, it's this area right here, and that's going to be equal to one meter squared. Okay, one meter squared. And uh, okay, so let's go on to the next step now. We have uh, list all assumptions. And so a couple of them were given in this problem statement right here. So constant uh, density. And then we'll say constant uh, cross-sectional area A. Um, let's just say that the tank can't overfill. We have as much height as we need on the tank. So we don't have any uh, spillover. Okay, so no uh, spill over, although we could simulate that as well. Okay, and uh, you know, constant supply pressure. You can go into a couple other um, uh, assumptions here, supply pressure, so that our valve coefficient is going to lead to a flow rate, uh, for example. Okay, so there's uh, there are some assumptions right here and uh, then we want to go on to the next step okay determine the spatial dependence okay so we have a different height at different locations so no we're just going to have a lumped parameter system we just have one height that describes the state of that tank so this is going to be an ODE uh, system, or ordinary differential equation system. If I had something like uh, you know concentration that I wanted to predict and it wasn't well mixed, then I might have different concentrations in different parts of the tank. So that'd be an example of a spatial uh, distribution of a quantity. But I have an ordinary differential equation. Uh, let's go back to the uh, the balances. So we're going to use a mass balance. And in any balance, we do accumulation equals in minus out plus generation minus consumption. So let's write this for our mass. dm dt equals mass flow rate in minus mass flow rate out. The nice thing about mass is unless you're dealing with a nuclear system, the generation and consumption are going to be equal to zero. Okay, so there is our um, equation. The next one is going to be to uh, write any other uh, relationships. Okay, the one that we need is how density and height and volume relate to each other. So the mass is going to be the density times the volume. And the volume of our uh, in our tank, uh, we have density times height times area. Okay, so the height times the area equals the volume, and the mass is gonna be density times volume. So we're gonna need that for our equation as well. We can plug that in here, and then um, let's go down to our next one, okay? Degrees of freedom, do we have the same number of equations as number of unknowns? We have one mass balance and we are trying to predict height. So there is our number of unknowns. 
Okay, and there's our number of uh, equations. So we have one equation and one unknown. So that works. We have uh, appropriate degrees of freedom. We'll call, we'll call that a square system. Same variables as equations. Okay, so let's classify the inputs as uh, fixed values, disturbances, manipulated variables. We have fixed are going to be something like density. Those are going to be constant. We might have uh, disturbances like, um, you know, what's coming into the tank. Or in this case, I'd really classify that as a manipulated variable. What is the percent open on the valve? Okay, you really don't have any disturbances. You would have a disturbance if you had like another line coming in or a leak from the tank or something like that. Something that you could either measure or not measure, but you really can't control. Okay, classify outputs. These are going to be our states. Um, we have our height as one of the states. Now that height could become a controlled variable if we have like a set point for it um, later on as we develop a controller. But let's just classify that one as a state for now. Okay, let's simplify our balance equation based on the assumptions, and then we'll do steady state simulation and dynamic simulation. So let's um, plug these in. So we have um, rho times height times area, dt equals, and then the mass flow rate in is gonna be this constant C times percent open. Okay, so I was just dealing with that one right there. And then our mass flow rate out is zero. We have no outlet. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, just take some of these constant values outside. Uh, rho times A times DH DT equals C times percent open. Okay, and if I uh, just move things to the right hand side, I have C divided by rho A times percent open. Okay, there I have my system. Okay, if I simulate steady state, for example, let's say percent, I start with an initial condition of zero, and my percent open is zero, then uh, my height is still going to be zero. Okay, uh, but this is actually an integrating system, so if you do have any uh, opening in the valve, there really is no steady state. Okay, now we want to be able to simulate um, the dynamic uh, part of this as well. Let's go ahead and develop a Python uh, script for this. We're just going to go through this uh, rather quickly. Um, so first of all we need NumPy and we'll just import that as NP. Uh, we'll need matplotlib and we'll import that as PLT. And then we'll also need ODE int which is going to be our ODE integrator. Now, this is a simple enough uh, system that you could almost do this um, by hand. But let's just go through the exercise of doing this in Python. Okay, we're going to define our tank model. We'll define uh, tank. It's going to be a function of level and time. And then we're going to have some of these uh, inputs like our uh, valve constant C, our valve opening. And uh, then we're going to have rho, our density is going to be defined, uh, our cross-sectional area. There's our tank area. We can calculate the derivative of the level and return that. So. In, a, uh, in this Python file, the thing that odient needs is a function that will return the derivative value. And so our level with respect to time, our height, um, is going to be equal to C divided by rho A um, times the valve opening. And then we'll just return that, just like you see there in the equation. So now we want to set up our simulation. We're going to define a time span. We'll look at the uh, values every 0.1 seconds. So we're going to use uh, NumPy LinSpace and go from 0 to 10 seconds and have 101 points. So that's going to give us uh, 0.1 intervals. And then our valve operation, um, we have our C value, which is going to be equal to 50. And uh, there's our valve. I just put a comment in there, just wrapped around. Uh, I'll make this just a little bit bigger, just so it doesn't wrap. Okay, and then uh, we have our U value, which is our input, our, our valve percent open. Okay, so that's going to be, uh, we're going to have that be zeros initially, and then we're going to open it between 2 and 7 seconds. Okay, so I'm going to go between 21 and 70, uh, because you have about 10 time points per second. And I'm going to set that to 100. Okay, so let's define our initial condition. So for, um, you know, for 
uh, this ODE int, we're going to need uh, three things. One is the function, which is going to be our tank. The other one is going to be the time points. Um, any inputs or parameters that we want to uh, send into the uh, function. And then um, also our initial condition. So our initial level is zero. And I'm going to set up a storage, just uh, this Z value for storing the results. And uh, then I'm going to simulate with ODE int. Now I'm going to loop through uh, this as a for loop, each of the time uh, intervals. And so I'm going to range uh, from uh, up to 100. I have 101 time points. So I need, I have 100 intervals that I'm going to simulate. And I'm going to say that my valve is going to be equal to this U value. Uh, and I'm going to index that with I. So I'm going to go from 0 to 99. And the very first one is going to be U1. So that's going to be uh, 0 initially, and then it'll change to 100 at particular intervals. And then my Y equals ODE int. This is where I'm integrating just 1, 0.1 seconds at a time. So there's my tank, my initial condition, and my time span. I'm just going to go from uh, just 0.1 seconds. And then I have these arguments that are going to be passed in um, now if you saw that, uh, here are my uh, two additional arguments. Uh, the only ones that are required are level and time, or my states and, and time. But I can have these optional arguments that are passed in there as well. Okay, so take, I'm going to take the last point. Okay, and just be able to um, use that as my new initial condition, my level 0 for the next time it loops through there. And then I'm going to just store the level as well so I can plot it later. Okay, let's go ahead and plot the results. Um, I'm going to have a subplot. My very first subplot, I'm going to just put the level. And I'm going to change the line width to 3, make it a blue solid line. And then I'm going to have a, a label it tank level. Okay, my next subplot, um, this is going to be a 2 by 1, so 2 rows, 1 column on the subplots and it's going to be my second one. So um, 2, 1, 1 means two rows, one column and go to the first subplot. 2, 1, 2 means two rows, one column, go to the second subplot. And then I'm going to have this be a red dashed line, line width 3, and that's going to be my valve, my U value. Okay, label it time in seconds and then show the plot. So I'm going to save this. I'll just, you can simulate this in um, you know, this could be in IDLE, it could be in Spider. I'm going to use Python 3.6 for this. Although you can use Python 2.7 or other versions. And then when I run it, um, let's see if I can simulate this system. Okay, so this is going to be our tank filling. Uh, so let's just take a look at this plot right here. We have um, our tank level uh, that you can see goes up to about 25. And you can see when the valve is opened. So it's open between two and seven seconds right there. You can see as I kind of mouse over this, you can see the different values changing. Um, and then that goes up to about um, you know, 25 or so, a little less than 25, 24 and a half. Okay, but you can see it's just a kind of a linear uh, increases, um, you know, with time over that uh, time period that the valve is open, then when it's closed, it levels out again. So that makes reasonable sense for the dynamics. Okay, so go ba going back to what we just covered for developing a dynamic model, um, we use these 12 steps for dynamic modeling. And I'd recommend these 12 steps, especially as you're starting out uh, developing these dynamic models that you uh, very carefully follow these. It will help you develop very good habits for later. Uh, this is a very simple system. You may not have needed you know, all of these 12 steps, but it's good practice to go through it just so that you um, are aware of the, the steps and you uh, develop good habits for later when your models are a little bit more complex.